University of Applied Sciences uh, in Amsterdam. Um, and we're going to talk to you about uh, hybrid publishing workflow and help <coughs> small publishers to uh, create uh, print and digital uh, books efficiently and simultaneously. Um, this workflow was part of a two year uh, project that I think some people here were also involved in. I think I saw Michael Merkel. <laughs> uh, um, first, I I think there, there's a fair share of, you know, of publishing interested people here, but who knows what's, or, yeah, who doesn't know what hybrid publishing is? <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, just to us it means creating print, but also people and uh, uh, websites from the same source file, uh, and the aim for us is to make it as um, yeah, efficiently and Open to collaboration as possible. Well. Um, yeah, okay. Traditionally, uh, <laughs> uh, the workflow that's used in, in publishers to create different outputs from uh, one file kind of looks like this to us. Um, I guess there's two outputs, but they don't, they're not really aware of each other, don't really want to be together, uh, want to move in different directions, not really you know, allowing their own features to flourish. Um, and uh, now what we propose looks more like this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that you're laughing. So it's, yeah, it's, the, the different outputs really um, uh, yeah, are allowed to have their own uh, specific features and they build on top of each other instead of exist kind of, yeah, uh, in, in, in different realms. Um, Um, yeah, before we really go into the workflow, um, it's, good, it's, it's good to consider um, that, you know, those different outputs have different, uh, it, it means something different to your workflow if you're uh, going to choose for, if you want to make something that's uh, highly customizable and really rich, then it's better to go for something like a website, obviously, and not choose Epo, which is uh, or, yeah, uh, usually more standard and plain, especially for these. Um, this is oh, uh, this is kind of the traditional workflow that I talked about, and the uh, difficult thing here, or the problematic thing, is that the InDesign file is central, and obviously InDesign is a proprietary software that's problematic, but also it's um, yeah, it's, it's not open to. Uh, authors and editors, they don't know how to use it, so it's, uh, it's kind of very possible a lot of process for people involved in book making. Um, so, what we propose is, instead of using uh, InDesign is that, that central document where things come together, we use uh, Markdown, uh, and that's uh, it's really good for um, why it was chosen was um, uh, because it's uh, really good. It, it, it's it's so plain text that it's really easy to archive. It's has a lot of sustainability, um, and it also uh, ah, yeah, it's easy to convert and uh, corrections that are made flow easily through uh, to the different outputs you see on the on the bottom, like keyboard print and online media. That, Standard things for us to focus on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's it, uh, markdown for us that kind of opens up the, the workflow to an iterative, iterative process and uh, yeah, places the different uh, layers on a level, level playing field. Okay, so Inza and I are not so technical people, and uh, we are not here when the workflow was created. Um, but we are the people who use the workflow and um, who keep on developing it, uh, at least with uh, new ideas. Um, so we'll give you a small uh, overview of uh, how it works. Um, so basically, uh, here are the <laughs> ingredients we need to create an EPO. So let's say we want to make an EPO. Um, so of course you need a text editor and processor, and the thing is that 
we work with lots of uh, authors and writers who use uh, Word and that uh, saves docx files, so that's something that we need to take in account. Unfortunately, people use a lot of that software. Uh, so we need a text processor which can uh, export a docx file. Um, of course, uh, well, if you need markup uh, editor or something to write code, of course. And uh, then Convert Library, which is um, um, the, what we need to in our work so to export all the files needed. Um, so I guess some of you know about Pondoc, but for people who don't know about it, just quickly, it's a um, document converter, which can transform uh, plenty of um, different formats to another. And uh, it understands a lot of uh, different um, markdown syntax extensions and um, also a lot of uh, metadata for documents uh, as a footnotes tables also. Uh, so we use it because it's really easy to uh, work with text. Um, and so uh, we use all our different outputs to conduct as a markdown, EPUB, ICML, point design, and uh, HTML. Um, so the first step, uh, the author and the editor have to stylize uh, the manuscript with the software they want, so we can use LibreOffice because it can also export docx files. Um, and then with that simple command line, uh, you can like, uh, convert that to a markdown file, and uh, so you can see how it's really simple, and I guess that you all understand what it's written. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is that uh, it's very short and really easy for uh, people that can just Base that file and uh, exports what they want. Um, and so uh, now you create your markdown file, and I guess you all know also how to use markdown. But just to sum up quickly, you can really like um, keep the styles that you wrote with your um, inside your docx file, and then you can just like um, save all the headings you've put. And um, so basically it's in the markdown file that all of the modifications are going to be made if there is uh, something to edit in the files. And it um, has been proved that people that uh, are <coughs> not like, familiar with coding of course can use uh, and learn markdown very quickly. So that file is really important in our work so because um, we can um, involve, uh, make uh, editors and uh, authors uh, more involved in the process. Um, and then again, you use a phone doc to export uh, your EPUB. And um, I mean, we use Kali a lot. It's an open source uh, software that can uh, allow you to edit your EPUB. And, uh, and that's it. Um, and Yeah, and also, of course, we use a lot of GitHub to collaborate with a lot of uh, people. And um, so you can have a look at our uh, GitHub page, and we can uh, like see all the process for uh, every publication because everything is archived there. And um, also, since we use since we use a specific um, um, tree in uh, the organization of the followers, it's really like easy to duplicate whatever you want and keep that. Um, so it's uh, very convenient for us. And um, so at the Institute of Natural Cultures, we uh, use that workflow for a different series as a theory and demand and series and network notebooks. Um, and we use um, so that, um, that workflow with uh, Pondoc, um, like for the different files uh, we, we make accessible through the website. Uh, but also, there is one point. Uh, with the printed PDF, we have to create a temporary HTML file to import the content and create a layout with InDesign, <laughs> and I'll get back to an alternative to that later. Um, yeah, so uh, what we, we've discussed up now is um, part of uh, a two-year research project, as I said. Uh, that was um, conducted by the Institute of Network Cultures together with uh, people at uh, the Lundergarden Academy and also a consortium of uh, uh, yeah, organizations really from the, from the publishing field, uh, arts uh, publishers uh, and graphic designers and developers. Um, yeah, so we really tried to work 
Documented the, 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 the process, the research process, and uh, we made a hybrid book. Um, and I have some with me. I think some of you might have already taken one. They're free to take. And um, yeah, read. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the, on our site, uh, you can just find all our uh, blog posts and uh, all the documentation from that uh, um, uh, period. Um, they're all freely accessible. Um, but when that toolkit was, when that project was finished, um, the people that uh, were involved in it uh, thought, well, actually, it's not finished. We need to go on. This is a really important topic. Thanks. Um, and uh, that's when um, the publishing hub was born, uh, which is where I work. Um, and this is kind of a place for ongoing uh, research and private publication. Uh, these are some of the projects um, that, that we uh, work on. Um, so like um, digital news uh, publishing, educational publishing, online reading, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, our website is basically just this, um, yeah, recently, Big resource of, of um, yeah, uh, different topics that have to do with uh, hybrid publishing. You'll see a name, Andre Gasco, that's going to uh, talk later as well, who's involved uh, at the publishing hub as well. Um, and Jess Lundell. Um, yeah, this topic like, yeah, big layout, um, typography, <coughs> stuff like that. Um, and then also uh, the sausage machine, which is uh, the topic of the next talk, I think, by uh, Gottfried Heide. Uh, he kind of worked on a um, drag and drop web interface for those uh, parts in the process uh, where you have to use the terminal to uh, produce the book, so even making it more accessible again to non-technical people. Um, but I'll leave the details of that to him. Yes, so as I say, um, I come back with an alternative to design. <laughs> um, it is we really, um, basically worked on improving the current workflow that was based on InDesign because lots of the people that were working on creating the publications before were used to InDesign. <coughs> and um, also because like the switch to the, to the workflow um, in itself was already a huge step uh, for people to create uh, the publications. Um, so, um, I think that we all know how hard it is to switch from one software and we are used to that to another. Um, so, but now we want to go to uh, more open source uh, software, of course. And so, to make it also, we have to take into account that, um, of course, the HTML file that we are exporting with the workflow doesn't <laughs> work with Scribus. But um, instead of that, we have to import um, uh, an HTML file uh, so that we can keep the headings. Um, made. And um, it's also great for us because uh, we work um, on explaining the HTML branch of the workflow. Um, because uh, basically, the idea was to turn the current publications webpage of the Institute of Natural Cultures um, to a more uh, routable and such able page. Um, well, maybe we can. Um, yeah, and um, so we thought about um, creating a new uh, platform on because. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so we can see how it looks like for now. And um, 
So because now on the website, um, you you basically have the static files that are exported with the workflow as a PDF that you can download and also the uh, EPUB you can also download. Uh, but it was pretty hard to have an overview of the content in itself of the books. Uh, so instead, we thought about creating an HTML file uh, for each publication with the workflow and to put it online. And um, so for now, that's uh, an overview of the website that is uh, in its beta version. Um, so there are a lot of things to uh, work on. But the idea was to make it a bit more interactive also. Uh, there's lots of scripts. Yeah. So you can have more um, details on the website. Um, and also a new project <laughs> was to experiment with an audio output for the workshop, so to work with audiobooks. And um, so for now the project is still in development, but the idea was to basically create an MP3 file from the text content that would include metadata, and then you can switch from one chapter of the book to another, and then to produce an M4B. Uh, that can include those metadata. And um, of course, the choice of the voice is very important because it shouldn't be too <laughs> robotic. And uh, for now, um, well, the best voices we found were um, unfortunately made by Amazon for the platform they have called Ebola.com. So, for instance, Amy and Brian are the top <coughs> list. But um, we try to find alternatives in an open source library. Um, yeah, we're always looking for uh, possible collaborations with people that are working on similar things, or maybe completely different things, but similar ones, like a hybrid thing, a new work thing. Um, so yeah, please contact us and take one of the books. Um, uh, yeah.